We're in conversation with Mr. Rajiv Mimani, the chairperson of EY India. Thank you very much, sir, for talking to us uh, here at Davos. You know, we've been talking to global and Indian leaders since yesterday, and uh, one thing that stood out was how all of them said India is a bright spot, uh, even as they talk about uncertainties globally. So, geopolitics. This time, there's an added dimension of AI. There's also an added dimension of elections in many countries yeah. this year. Record election, yeah. Uh, what's weighing on CEOs' minds, according to you? No, I think CEOs right now. If I look at the global CEOs and who I talk with, uh, uh, I would say geopolitics would probably be the number one thing, and the impact of that on supply chain and other things. Uh, the second is AI, uh, and the third is depending on the geography that you're in, whether in Europe, US. You know, when will the uh, economy bounced back. Everyone was hoping for a, uh, you know, a couple of quarters of recession last year, uh, but it didn't happen. You know, and uh, and now interest rates are starting to stabilize. Inflation is is stabilizing, uh, but last year was actually quite resilient because the the family incomes, the strong balance sheets, uh, held up. The uh, uh, fundamental tenets of the economy were strong. Consumer consumers were still spending. People were fully employed. So it was not as bad. It was actually quite quite okay. This year, I think people anticipate that Europe will probably be slightly faster than grow better than last year, and and US will probably be uh, slightly on the slower side for for various reasons. So, I would say these were the, these would be the three things, uh, and then the fourth, yeah, on sustainability. Mm. What's the map that they want to ch uh, chart out? I think that's also very important uh, because. Uh, Everyone understands it's a big issue. Uh, it's taken a bit of a backseat earlier because of COVID, AI, geopolitics. But everyone knows, uh, both for personal reasons and from a corporate standpoint, that how they address the sustainability agenda in a in a profitable manner, in an efficient manner. I think that'll be very very important. Right. Um, you know, uh, the other thing is, twenty twenty four is also a year of multiple big elections, right? U.S., India, South Africa, Taiwan. So, are boardrooms of big multinationals talking about these? Are they concerned? Yeah, of course they're concerned, and I would say the uh, biggest uh, amongst them, from a global standpoint, will be right. the U.S. election. Yeah. So everyone is keenly looking at what will happen because the implications of. Uh, uh, you know, different people coming on the uh, global geopolitics will be uh, will be very different. Uh, I'm not an expert on that, so I'll not comment on that. But but that's the sense. So that is definitely something that people are looking at very closely, not only in the U.S. but but around the world. India as well. Uh, no, Indian companies who are looking at uh, who are who have a global business. The Indian elections. Yeah, Indian elections also. Yeah, but I would mm -hmm. say that. Uh, uh, you know, generally there is uh, uh, a belief that you know the the uh, you know based on the current elections and everything else, I think people feel confident that it would be a vote for yeah, it it be a vote for continuity. And I think mentally, uh, I haven't seen people sort of slowing down hmm. uh, their thought process uh, because of that till now. Right. So so I think they're still going. Uh, maybe a month before, two months. In terms of capital allocation decisions, people may look at it differently. But there is a the Indian narrative is is honestly getting stronger. I mean, we can if you want, we can talk about it. But you know, it's getting stronger at Davos as well. At Davos as well. I mean, I think it's uh, you know India being fifth largest economy, you know, becoming the third largest by twenty twenty by twenty seven, twenty eight, whatever you want to pick up, uh, and. You know, the growth in per capita income that's happening, the minimization of the economy that's happening, all that is fine. I think the real story, at least that's what I think, is the resilience that India is demonstrating. You know, whether it's resilience in terms of the macroeconomic fundamentals that is there, resilience in terms of the balance sheet sizes that you're seeing, hmm. so, re resilience in terms of balance sheet sizes that you're seeing, a strength of the balance sheets, a resilience in terms of the way policy framework is being developed. Resilience in the way technology is being adopted by government, by businesses, especially by government, to to become more efficient. And I think resilience, given the the aspiration of the government, the uh, aspiration of the entrepreneurs, the aspiration of people, you know, they define at the end of the day of which how economy shapes. So I would say there is a story about growth, size, uh, numbers, but there's a deeper story of the strength of and the economy resilience. and resilience. And I think that's that's really coming out very strong. Right. 
So, Imani, you know, India has also been talking a lot about shifting of, you know, the global value chains from China to India mm. in areas such as electronics, pharma, etc. Yeah. Um, how, you know, how have we fared so far? What else needs to be done? No, I think we've fared, uh, uh, you know, potential is huge. Mm. So, you know, we have to be patient in this. Uh, but in the areas that we have focused, I think we have fared well. There are lots of improvements still. Uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, whether it's the ease of doing business, uh, uh, labor laws, uh, you know, trying to look at more efficiency in logistics, cost structures. But in whatever we have done till now, you know, we have fared reasonably well. So if I look at electronics, if you look at telecom, the amount of value addition that India has done, uh, you know, apart from manufacturing, but the value addition that's happening almost 20% now is, you know, from a speed standpoint, it's amongst the fastest that's happened. So I think it's been very fast way the the the, the valuation in consumer electronics we're seeing more and more of that. So wherever they have focused, I, I know I'm sure you know semiconductors others. And as you as we see uh, the PLI schemes in new energy coming through, uh, I am pretty sure whether it is batteries, whether it's electrolyzers, uh, eventually you know uh, not to do with manufacturing, but some way you know hydrogen and others. I'm I'm very confident that the overall manufacturing story. Will stack up very well. I'm one of the few people, maybe, who's very bullish on manufacturing in India. Uh, the domestic market is huge. The domestic market uh, opportunity is 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 very clear. Uh, the government is crystal clear on what they want. Yes, there are challenges. Yeah, India is not China in terms of efficiency. But if I compare to relative to what's happening around the world, uh, the scale at which uh, the speed at which entrepreneurs are setting up uh, manufacturing units, the efficiency adoption that we have. Uh, you know, full server has experienced, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing here has had a positive experience. Uh, so if I look at multinational companies, you know, if I look at Indian companies, yes, the initial setup takes time. Hmm. Initial pain of setting up a management team, even getting approvals, processes, land, all that takes time. But once you're through and you've got a strong management team, I think things stack up pretty well. Right. Um, final question, sir. Any expectations that you have from the upcoming budget, interim budget rather? No, I don't have, it's a vote on account. I think the government, uh, and rightly so, will give a, a, an account of what they've done over the last five years. Uh, you know, the the how from a macroeconomic standpoint, data standpoint, how the last year has fared, I think they'll talk about that, which is again a very positive story. Uh, if you compare it with GDP growth that's happening uh, around the world, uh, yeah, you know, India will probably be doing more than 7% as we are all estimating. Tax revenue collections are very buoyant. Uh, FISC is under control in election year. Allocation to CapEx. So I think it's a very positive narrative on the... I, I And I would say that yes, maybe on the personal tax side or, uh, you know, where they can provide relief to uh, individuals uh, who have been... Uh, whose savings and uh, incomes have been impacted because of inflation and if they can provide any relief either through direct tax or indirect tax measures. I have a feeling they will they will try and do that. Uh, but uh, I don't, and, and maybe some policy statements and some outlook of how next year looks like. Uh, I think we get that. But m my sense is that the uh, uh, the real full budget will only come after elections. And thank you very much, sir, thank for talking to much. us.